What a week. First, look who's back in front of the camera. Conan O'Brien, George Bush, and me. There's no joke there. Well, it's kind of a punchline. Next, on Monday, Derek and JF insist on covering racing on FLD, announcing how F1 Constructors champs Red Bull started out as Jaguar. Except they missed the part that the team started as Stuart GP, as in Jackie, way back in 1997 then morphed into JAG in 2000, then became Red Bull in 2004. So you guys want to cover racing? Okay, I'll do car news. JF, put up that graphic I gave you. Pontiac officially died November 1. Great cars named after great places to go fast, like Bonneville and Lamar. Hey, how about it? If they named a car after the greatest road of all, the New Jersey Turnpike. Maybe Pontiac would still be here today, right? Yeah, the Pontiac New Jersey Turnpike. I'll even do a Michael Jackson video for it. Oh my God. This is a special F1 only edition. My producer looked at some viewer research and thinks you guys need a shorter one topic shakedown. So this is a perfect time to try it out. F1 fans know where we stand. For the rest of you, it's this. After 18 and 19 races with a new 2010 scoring system that effectively doubled the points for each placing and widened the gap between position points, we have the last race shootout between the two Red Bulls and Alonso Ferrari, all separated by only 15 points. Alonso at 246, Weber, the leader for most of the season at 238, Vettel at 231. If Weber wins, Fernando needs P2. If Vettel wins, Fernando needs only P4. Then all Fernando needs to do is follow them home and keep one McLaren behind him. And Jensen's been delivering that most of the season. Sorry to kill the drama, but it's as simple as that. Except it's not, because this is racing. On Autosport Bulletin Board Forum, I found this neat permutation spreadsheet made by poster Frank Tuesday. So while it sounds easy for Fernando, he needs to deliver and qualify. But last year Ferrari struggled on the sandy track with only a P11 starting spot from Kimi. This year's car is better, and another diffuser change opening up another air intake, this time on top, makes the design even more Red Bull-like. And if Massa wants to save his job or reputation, now would be a good time. Weber, who hasn't won in seven races, needs to step up now. He needs a Fernando tying fifth win for the season and a Vettel P2. Vettel must stay on his game of late and get his fifth win, but he needs the most help from fellow racers or the mechanical gods to grab the driver's title. And by the way, Vettel won Abu Dhabi in 2009. It was an RB 1-2. Before Sunday's race, I want to see your comments as to what you think the drivers need to do. I'll kickstart the discussion with the following. As Alonso, I'm going to trust my skills and push the Red Bulls as hard as I can, believing I can make Weber blink. And Mark, he needs to erase out of his head all the BS and trust two things, his skills and the goodness of destiny. But focus, don't drop a wheel again like in Korea. And Vettel, he has no choice but to do anything, everything to get to P1, so he could be the most electric to watch. But whatever the championship result, unless the race is decided by an alien attack, Skyline the movie, opening today in a theater near you. <laughs> I fear the debates could go on forever, as each driver's fanboy reflects on the what could have been, should have been. RB fans will scream Alonso got graced seven extra points with the P1 he took in Germany when Massa olayed him to the win. Weber fans will challenge the Vettel hits. And I'll question Red Bull's cross-driver tactics and politics, and so on, and so on. And then there'll be the discussion of team character. Extreme roll with it Red Bull versus Machiavellian Ferrari. As amplified by Red Bull boss Dietrich Matisic, who said he didn't want to manipulate things between his drivers, even if it meant losing a title. His quote, let the two drivers race and what will be will be. We don't become champion, we'll do it next year. This is sport and it must remain sport. We don't manipulate things like Ferrari. So the rumors of Weber engine turndowns to favor Vettel, those don't count. At the end of it all, it's all racing. The driving, the strategy, the technology, the teams. And the two best teams for 2010 are battling it out. And with this Abu Dhabi race, I can't think of a sterner test of team, driver desire, and will of purpose of what will unfold on Sunday. So the lights are on and the revs are up. Here we go. And finally for today, I want to remind you of an absolutely amazing film. We've referenced it a few times in our show, but now you can own it for your own personal collection. It's called Rendezvous, and it's the 1976 film where French filmmaker Claude Lelouch created the ultimate car chase scene. It's nine minutes long, and it's one single take through the streets of Paris at extremely high speeds. 
Jeremy Clarkson even said that the film makes Bullet look like a cartoon. You can now buy it for your own collection at www.spiritlevelfilm.com. Hell, JF owns it, and you should too. Hamilton got the Abu Dhabi poll in 2009. If he asserts himself between our three protagonists, that champion will be the racer that handles Lewis best. My head and heart say Alonso. My sense of what's fair wants Weber. And Vettel, the minute he adds racecraft to his speed, he'll be a champion.